when you're solving a system of linear, linear equations, um, let's think about how many solutions you can have for your system. Um, so there are only three possibilities, really. One is that you'll have one unique solution. Um, two is that you'll have no solutions. The system will be called inconsistent. And three, there will be infinitely many solutions. All right, so I have three examples here. Um, one corresponds to each of the possibilities, and we're going to see what that looks like in practice. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and solve each of these systems and see what happens. Um, this first one, all right, let's write it in a coefficient matrix. I have 1x1 plus 3x2 plus 2x3 is 5. 2x1, 7x2, 4x3, 8. 0x1, 1x2, minus 1x3, minus 6. I'll put my little divider line in there. I just wanted to get this into RREF form, reduced row echelon form. So first, I'm going to take row 2 and subtract 2 times row 1. So 2 minus 1 minus 1 is 0. 7 minus 3 is 4. Minus 3 again is 1. 4 minus 2 minus 2 is 0. 8 minus 5 is 3. Minus 5 is minus 2. I forgot to write my first row again. And I'm going to leave my second row as it is for now. All right, next step, I'm going to subtract uh, the second row from the third row to get a zero right there. So one minus one is zero, minus one minus zero is minus one, minus six minus minus two, that's minus four. Right now, I'm just going to multiply this by negative 1 real fast and get rid of, the, rid of those negatives. So now I have 1 and 4. Um, now I'm going to use these two ones to get rid of that 3 and 2. So going over to here, that'll become um, 3 minus 3 times this row. So 3 minus 3 is 0. 2 minus 0 is 0. 5 minus 3 times minus 2. That's 5 minus negative 6, 5 plus 6 is 11. Uh, and finally, I'm going to 2 minus 2 times this row. So 1, 0, 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0, 11 minus 2 times 4, that's 11 minus 8. So that should be 3. And copy my other two rows. All right, I'm in reduced row echelon form. And I can see that there is one unique solution. Uh, x1 equals 3, x2 equals minus 2, x3 equals 4. I'll write that, x1, x2, x3. I'm writing it as a vector right now. one corresponds. x1 is 3, x2 is minus 2, x3 is 4. Um, that's one solution, one unique solution. Um, because I'm in three variables, uh, each of those disqua equations describes a plane. Um, so what that will really look like is the intersection of three planes, which intersect at one point. Uh, I can try to draw this. I don't know how good this is going to be. Um, so here's one plane. And that's a piece of paper standing like that. Here's another one. Perpendicular, there's that intersection. And I'm going to draw another one standing up but turned 90 degrees. So intersected there, come out the bottom. draw a straight line. Um, so those three planes, they're kind of crowded, but they only touch all together at that one little point. And that's what that solution set represents. So when you have one, uh, one unique solution, um, that's 
geometrically what we're looking at. I'll keep my answer. Get ready for the next problem. OK, let's solve this. Um, this is only in two variables. This will be shorter. Let's write it in a matrix. 2, minus 3, 1. 4, minus 6, 1. OK, right away I can subtract um, 4 minus 2 times this row. Um, so 4, oops. 4 minus 2 times 2 is 0. Minus 6 minus 2 times minus 3, that's also 0. 1 minus 2 times 1, that's going to be negative 1. And here we've hit an error. Um, here we have 2x1 minus 3x2 equals 1, but then 0x1 plus 0x2 equals negative 1. Um, so that's what's called inconsistent. That can't be. We have uh, a problem. Um, so that's why we say that this system has no solution. So that was example one. Example two, no solution. Finally, let's do number three. Uh, I'll write this in a coefficient matrix. So that's 1, minus 2, minus 2, minus 9, 2, minus 4, 1, 2, and 3, minus 6, minus 2, minus 11. Okay, I'm going to take 2 minus 2 times the first row. That'll be 0 minus 4 minus 2 times minus 2. That's minus 4 plus 4 is 0. 1 minus 2 times minus 2. That's 1 plus 4. That's 5. 2, OK, minus 2 times minus 19. That's 2 plus 18. That should be 20. And 3 minus 3 times the first row. So That'll be 0. Minus 6 minus 3 times minus 2. That's 0. Minus 2 uh, minus 3 times minus 2. Minus 2. Minus, uh, that's minus 2 plus 6, right? So that'll be 4. And minus 11 plus 3. I'm going to write this part. Minus 11 minus. 3 times minus 9, that's a lot of minuses. So that's minus 11 plus 27. And that's the same as 27 minus 11, 16. Boop -boop. All right, now I'm going to uh, I'm going to divide this row by 5 and this row by 4, and that will actually make them identical. So I can just subtract this row out and get a 0 for, um, for that row. And finally, I'm going to get rid of that negative 2. Minus 2 plus 2 times 1 is 0. Minus 9 plus 4 plus 4. That will be minus 1. And 0, 0, 1, 4. 0, 0, 0, 0. All right, so now I'm in reduced row echelon form. Uh, I here have x3 equals 4. When we have a free variable, we assign that to t. So we're going to say x2 equals t. Now this first row reads as x1 minus 2x2, or t, equals minus 1. So x1 equals minus 1 plus 2t. 
I'm going to write that in matrix form. So x1 minus 1 plus 2t, x2 is t, and x3 is 4. Another way to write this is we separate out the vectors that have t in them with the ones that are just constant. For that, we would write minus 1, uh, 0, and 4 plus t times 2, 1, 0. And that becomes a more useful way of writing it later on when we discuss other topics. Um, but for this solution, you can see that there's a free variable in there. And whenever you have a free variable, that means that there are infinitely many solutions. Because you can literally plug anything into that t, and you'll get a solution for that system. Um, so when you have infinitely many solutions, and that's a plane, that basically means um, that two of the planes intersect in a line, and you get infinitely many solutions along that line. Um, so those are the three choices you have when you're solving a linear system. You can have one unique solution, no solutions, or infinitely many solutions. Uh, check out the rest of the videos in this playlist for more helpful tips on linear algebra. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series and any of the other math-related videos on our channel. If you're not subscribed to our channel, Click this link right here. For more help with linear algebra, check out Worldwide Differential Equations with Linear Algebra by Robert McCohen or Elementary Linear Algebra by Bruce Cooperstein. Both are available at an affordable price in digital formats on our website. Just click this link right here.